What's up guys, it is JTV here and welcome to another episode of the Cambridge United Road to Glory 3.0. Today's episode we'll be playing in the Europa League after qualifying coming 5th in the Prem last season we have made it into the Europa League. It's going to be interesting because with the 2.0 Road to Glory we didn't even go into the Europa League, didn't go into the Conference League, we went straight to the Champions League and we won it all. So if we can do the same then that would be nice. So we're starting things off by loaning out Hugo Pereira, who will be going in a one-year loan move to Italian side Fiorentina. And joining the team from Manchester City is Ederson. So if you guys have paid attention at all to really any of my Road to Glories, you'll know that I get a Youth Academy goalkeeper, I get a you know goalkeeper from the Youth Academy or buy one pretty much very early on, just to not have to worry about the position at all. This. However, this crew mode, I didn't really do that. We just, we've kind of been rotating keepers-ish for really the last, I mean, the first, like, four seasons, which is, it's either going to be Vera or Svr. And now, 126.2 million splash on Ederson. 91 overall, he's only, only 32 years old as well. He is a excellent distributor, obviously, which we kind of need, especially when you play back to the keeper, which is how I usually prefer to play. I think it's a very good... Um, choice and now hopefully I'll take us over the hump and joining the team from the youth academy is Caleb Summers 92 to 94 potential he's getting promoted and honestly expect him to go out on loan quite shortly Jamie Mahan is also joining the team left wing back running to left mid 86 to 92 potential Sean Watson will be going on one year loan move to SD Hoiska over in Spain and Hel Vera has been sold to Bergamo Calcio for 20.2 million. With the signing of Ederson, he didn't want to accept a contract role lower than normal, so instead of having him be upset the entire year he's with us, I decided just to sell him. And in the Europa League, we've been drawn in Group F, along with French side Montpellier, Romanian side University of Craiova. And I believe Austrian side, Sturm Graz, if I'm not mistaken. So I think it's actually a pretty, I don't know if it's a winnable group, because I don't know how good Montpellier are, but we should get top two. Sam Clarkson will be going on a two-year loan move to Granada. Youth Academy time now. Sending our first scout over to Canada, scout to America, and finally scout to Mexico. And here we are in our first Europa League game with Cambridge United in this series, hosting Montpellier at the Abbey Stadium. And this is how the team will be lining up. Ederson will be in goal. Redondo, De Vry, and Kostovin make up the back three. Andrade and Blanco are the center mids. Neil Ahmedi are the wings. Romero, Shulku are well, the wings. And Sinani is the main man up top. Here are the highlights. Well, a look at the table, and when the teams came out of the various pots for the Europa League draw, this clearly was one of the fixtures that jumped out off the page. What a game potentially this could be, Stuart. Oh, Derek, there's a chance here. Oh. Fruitful looking attack. And the referee has pointed to the spot. Penalty given. And on the back of that decision, now it's a caution. Well, it's a tight call, but in the end, I think he's got it right. A penalty and a yellow card. Can they extend their lead? And the penalty is converted. then. Outrageously skillful. Opportunity. And a... Well, there you have it. The hosts have had so much of the possession. They've passed it well, their movement's been good, and they've been well worth their lead. Could get even better here. Gives it a go. Ward Prowse. Now with Hammer. And that was a very fine read. A real opening now. And there And back with Leroy. Ward Prowse. Useful looking ball. He 
is in position. And a goal. Played into the centre. A pretty comfortable piece of defending. Giving it a try. Body on the line. Referees are rightly praised for giving advantage, but when there is no advantage, it has to be a free kick. And this might mean job done. In it goes! So a 6-1 victory is obviously amazing, and it pretty much does cement us as the best club in this group. Cameron Leons will be going on a tier long move to Portuguese side Aruca. 2 to 1 loss in the next game against the University of Craiova. Caleb Summers will be going on a short long move to FC Vizela for the rest of the season. Like I said, he's probably going to be going on alone a lot because his potential is quite high and I would like to use him in the future. Ed Edson Correa will be going on a short long move to UD Ibiza. Against Stream Grouse, we won our game 3 to 2. Tomas Osorio was joining the team from the Youth Academy. Argentinian striker, he's 6'3", just adds a little bit of different element at that backup striker position. 3-1 win against Strumgras. 3-2 win against Montpellier. And a 2-1 loss against University of Craiova, who just seemed to always beat us. So halfway through in the Europa League, we're, well in the Premier League, we are currently again in 5th, but 6 points off of 1st place, 4 points off of 2nd, 2 points off of 3rd and 4th. But at the same time, 8th place is only 2 points behind us. It's still anybody's game, anything can happen, and hopefully, one way or another, we're in the Premier League, and, well, in the Champions League, jeez, I'm having a rough morning. So, obviously, also winning the Europa League should also help us get into the Champions League, but so does having an amazing backup keeper in Yassine Banu. The 35-year-old Moroccan goalkeeper joins us for $47,000 a week wage, 8 to overall, He's not going to be a starter, but excellent backup behind Ederson. I also have to sign players from North America, so I'm signing some Americans. Justin Butler, backup striker. Sagir, Ars, backup striker. And Bryce Duke, backup center mid. Costa will be leaving the club once his contract expires. He'll be joining Portuguese side Aruca. Luca Morris will be going on a short loan move to Milan once the... Well, yeah, for the rest of the year. And in the round 16, we've been drawn against one of my favorite teams, Valencia. First leg, we beat them 3-1. And I decided it's not worth it to play a second leg if we beat them 3-1 in the sim. Beat them 1-0. I end up beat them 4-1 on an aggregate. We'll advance to the quarterfinals where we'll be facing off against one of the Netherlands' best teams, Feyenoord. Jamie Mahan will be going on a one-year long move to Aruka, which seems to be the destination for all of our players. To leave the club. Oliver Harper has been sold to Hoffenheim over in Germany. 2-2 two -two draw against Feyenoord means that we have to play the second leg, hosting them at the Abbey Stadium. Lineup is the same as it always is. Here are the highlights. Attack fizzled out. Real chance. Can he find the net? Save, but still a chance. And then... It's with Blanco. Hanging on to the ball in this fashion suits them. And then forward. high to win the ball now let's see about the cross great opportunity lost possession
30 minutes to go then. Oh, a lovely ball. And a goal! So the 4 2 victory means that we will be going through an aggregate 6 4. In the semifinals, we'll be facing off against PSG. Now, I would like to remind you that this is the Europa League semifinals, not the Champions League semifinals, because PSG and Bayern Munich are both here. First leg, we lost 2 to 1, which means it's pretty much miss Mission Impossible. We have to create quite the comeback against this PSG side. Hopefully, we can do a Real Madrid. So, lineup, we're going with that 3 4 3. Same thing as always. Hopefully we get the same result as we always do in a victory. Here are the highlights. Jane, they're certainly going to miss him here. Well, that'll be a free kick. Dangerous looking through ball. What a... Not messing around with that clearance. Breaking at pace. Opportunity is his. Surely. And that... Well, we always like a good transfer rumor, and this actually appears to be more than a rumor. What's your take, Stuart? Well, the fee talked about is around £30 million, which in my eyes is just about. Oh, spotting. Stuart, an opportunity. Can they keep it out? And it goes. De Frey. I'm delighted to say more Premier League action coming up for you here on EA. Oh, Derek, what a moment this could be. And a goal! 4-3 on aggregate, what next? And slipped through beautifully. Real chance. And a goal! Pressing high to win the ball. And he might be through here. And it's it! And Blanco on the ball. Duncan. Take some progress with the ball at his feet. And a goal here! Able to skip past his man. And whipped into the box. What a lovely strike! So a 6-2 victory is pretty much the message that we definitely deserve to be in the final, which will be taking place against Bayern Munich. Now obviously they're in the Europa League, so they could be horrible, or they could just had a really tough group. I have no clue how tough their team could be, but Next year, we will be without Paco, or no, we'll be without Niall Maher, who'll be joining Paco Ferreira. And we have a pretty important uh, game in the Premier League. We're traveling to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium to face off against Spurs. Lineup is very different because I'm just playing the backups. So one thing that I've realized, and honestly, I'll explain once this episode ends, things will be quite different for this channel in the future. I never really get to use any of these backups that we get, so I figured, why not mess around in the Premier League? You know, the final game, it doesn't really matter. Let's just kind of mess around with these guys, you know? I mean, Banu is in goal, Hilton, Costa, Azevedo, center backs. They haven't played, I haven't played using them in like forever. Duke and Duncan, center mids, McDonald, Keys, outside mids, Ars, Butler, Wings, and Bianchi at that striker position. I'm just here to have some fun. Here are the highlights. Options in the middle. Tanganga. Might be a chance here. There it is. Might be ideal for the counter. Luis Diaz. Can he make it count? Safe, but still a chance. And putting his body on the line. Denied again. Important interception. 
Well, I'm hearing a change to the scoreline in the Everton game. Alex Scott can tell us more. And he's through here. A goal! So Spurs didn't end up, in, end up winning the game 3-0, but kind of be expected we were playing, obviously, a worse team. But now it is time for... Thankfully, thanks to our position in the league, is not the biggest of games ever, but it is still a huge game. We're in the Europa League final at the Johan Cruyff Arena in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands. This is a huge deal, and we're facing off against the biggest club in Germany in Bayern Munich, so this is not to be taken lightly. Looking at the path to get here, obviously we had to face off against Valencia, very good team. Feyenoord, not the greatest of teams. Then obviously PSG, one of the best teams. I still don't understand how they are in the Europa League. And obviously Bayern Munich, they face Leverkusen, they beat every German team ever. They beat two Italian teams, Italy's not that great, so it's going to be interesting. And this is how Bayern Munich are lining up. They're playing a 4-2-3-1. They still have Alfonso Davies at left back, they got Mancini, Arujo, center backs. I just, again, don't understand how this team is in the Europa League. Kimmich, defensive mid. They do have Tammy Abraham, Pop, Sibitzer, attacking mid, Rafael Guerrero. See, I understand how this team could be in the Europa League, but this team I still think is way too good to be in the Europa League. And of course, we're lining up in our 3-4-3. Back to our starters, back to our good players. Here are the highlights. And played in by Kimmich. And a corner there that really lacked guile. And a big moment because the referee has pointed to the spot. Penalty coming up. Well, there might have been a case for a yellow card, but the referee didn't see it that way. Well, Derek, it's a foul, yes. A penalty, absolutely. But for me, it's not a yellow card. The ref has got that right. This to open the scoring here. And in it goes! Marcel Zabitza. So to dispossess your opponent. Big chance to get them on terms. Can he finish? And Blanco on the ball. Oh, he's really up on the up here. Pass. And a goal! This might be the perfect counter-attacking opportunity. Well, it looked highly promising, but it came to nothing in the end. Disappointing control, and they've lost the ball. Oh, a perfectly timed pass. Oh, a goal! looking ball and they need to get tighter here surely in it goes so a 4-2 victory means that we have in fact won the Europa League honestly it was quite boring the game being that so wide open I mean we crushed them but I really don't care because we have officially won the Europa League Edison Correa has left the club he'll be joining UDI Pisa and in the Premier League, we ended up finishing in fifth. We couldn't. The last the game against ugh, the game we played against Spurs didn't matter because Leicester City. I mean, we're four points behind them. They already played their final game, so the only thing we could do was drop down. But thankfully, Arsenal didn't weren't able to catch up to us. But we won the Rup we we won the Europa League, so we'll be in the Champions League next year. Would have liked to have won the FA Cup as well, but got knocked out in the semi-finals by Man City. Carabao Cup got knocked out in the fourth round by Hull City. And on y'all, obviously. Winning the Europa League, no big deal. First officially certified big boy club. Sonani led the team in goal scored with 39. Shofu had 12. Ahmedi had 20. Sonani led the team assists with 16. Ahmedi had 13. Shofu had 10. Alfred Duncan will be leaving the club once his contract expires. He is actually, in fact, retiring. Really going to miss him. Signed him on as a free agent center mid to kind of bolster that midfield. And he ended up becoming a club legend. 
I am going to miss him. was really hoping he could stick around for one more year. He is 34, though, and just want to thank him for everything he's done. So, managerial resume, we have officially now won a Continental Cup. Still have yet to win into Miss Domestic Cup, though, however. Still have more draws than losses. Things are going good. So, yeah, I mean, looking at this team, definitely need a new center back to replace DeFry. He's down, down to a 79 overall. But other than that, I don't think there's any glaring issues with this team. So, yeah, like I said, there's going to be some changes. Uh, if you guys have been paying attention, you know I've been saying, alright, we're going to do Cambridge United 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, maybe 6.0. I've decided that we're going to do 2.0, we're going to do 3.0, but then I've kind of gotten honestly sick of using Cambridge United, if that is any sense. Like, it's the English League is just, I've seen it all, you know, it's all it's also all just blending together. I have no clue whenever I'm doing these crew modes who's on what team, because obviously when you do it enough, you're just going to, you know, mesh things together. And the views haven't really often been coming, so we're trying something different. We're going to be doing a Australian Road to Glory because did a little bit of research found out that there is the Asian Champions League, or at least a equivalent to that in FIFA, so I'll be doing a Road to Glory that way. I'll also be switching things up. I think I'm going to do a Scotland crew mode next, probably then head to South America, go along with the Copa, Copa Libertadores, and just kind of bounce around, have a little bit of fun, because this is honestly done in quite boring FIFA just doing English leagues over and over again so I'm gonna mess around gonna have some fun hopefully you guys enjoy it as much as I will be subscribe if you're new and it is JTB signing off